Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. So today we're gonna to take a closer look at the Boston Police Department from gun violence, kids and crime, school safety and community policing. It's a very big job amid staffing shortages. Joining me now is Police Commissioner Michael Cox. He's a veteran of the department who served in several roles including the Police Academy, Operations, Internal Affairs, Intelligence and on Patrol. Welcome, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Wow, uh, it's been a very busy week for you. Lots of items in the news. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. it, it, has. it has. So um, Mayor Wu filed an ordinance uh, this past week to change the way that the city is going to handle the area known as Mass and Cass. Uh, it gives police the right to clear tents and calls for the opening of a nearby temporary shelter. So the mayor cited an increase in safety concerns. If you, if you would, explain this change in the situation in that area uh, and how do you think the police are going to now respond? Well, if it, if it passed, first of all, if the ordinance passes, it gives us the opportunity to, you know, one is, is have people remove the tents and tarps. Um, when, when, particularly in Mass and Cass, when those tents and tarps are up, unfortunately, people use those as a, a shield to, to actually do criminal acts, to prey on the people who actually live down there, whether it's through selling drugs or all kind of other activities that, that occurs. We only have so many rights uh, and, you know, constitutionally, and, you know, we just can't go through and look through people's things and things of that nature to, to capture. Even though they're living on a public street. Yes, and yeah. exactly. And so the fact is, is that um, the ability to, to, when people can't put those t tents and tarps up, and more importantly, if the city can, can provide people actually shelter and mm -hmm. get them services, whether mm -hmm. it's mental health services or substance abuse services, I mean, that's the goal of, of you know, what we're trying to do in general. And so uh, there's, a, there's a fair number of people down there that are preying on the people that are suffering, and, and we need to address that. That's a public safety issue. That's yes. not a public health issue. Mm -hmm. and, and by removing the tents and tarts, that gives us an, an opportunity actually to, to address it. To see a little bit more clearly. Absolutely. So have you done your own assessment of the situation uh, at, yeah. at Mass and Cast? Do you think this ordinance is long overdue? And, and uh, what might you do differently or add to it? So, uh, you know, it... it Ordinance are created, those are laws created by politicians, and so my role is actually law enforcement. It helps us in the sense that it gives us the authority to actually enforce, um, you know, you know, removing the tents and tarps to address the drug activity that goes on down there, to address the people that are coming to prey on the people down there. Uh, you know, we've been studying, I've been here about a year now, and we've been studying the issues in general. It's been a public health led uh, issue so mm -hmm. so far but the fact is that the that the behavior down there is now turned into criminal. a public safety and it's a issue. criminal it's not Absolutely. criminal activity it, it, lots of criminal activity yes. that is hidden behind mm -hmm. uh, you know the tents and tarps of which we need to address and 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 so I'm happy that the mayor uh, was able to put this forward hopefully it does pass and it, it, it will go a long way to give us the ability to address the criminal behavior that goes on mm -hmm. as well as let the providers that are down there actually be able to provide services and do things that they are trying to do yeah. in peace without worrying about their own safety. In the meantime, are we going to see a heavier police presence in the area? More patrol cars? So if, if, if it passes, I, I think what you'll see is a, a, a disbanding of, of what, what's occurring. I think uh, the, you know, part of the ordinance is that if people need, a, uh, in order to force to enforce it, that we have to offer them a place to stay. So if they're able to, you know, find housing mm -hmm. and get other services, I think that it will be uh, hopefully a, a better place, uh, less crowded uh, place. And then there's going to be some folks that are held over that just want to still, you know, prey on some of the people mm -hmm. in the activities. And, and, and those are the ones probably where we will get most of the arrests. I anticipate that once the cover of darkness is kind of pulled back, mm -hmm. uh, the area will get much better. And more importantly, um, those people who have bad acts on their mind will, will move on. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, last weekend's uh, shooting at Boston's annual Caribbean Carnival made national headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, press conference on CNN. Uh, it's a little shocking that it happened at 7.45 a.m. in the morning. Describe what your officers saw and was there anything that could have been done to prevent that shooting? So, you know, that's, a, that's the age-old question in the sense that, you know, we always want to prevent. One of the biggest ways you can prevent is having a presence, being out there, mm -hmm. being about. And we had many, many officers there. 
Uh, and so you know, people are pretty brazen sometimes, and, and they still do it even in front of people. And, and, and so, you know, we will come up with another plan in the future to see if we can try to address it even more. Uh, I, don't, I just don't know how when you have that many people sure. yeah. <laughs> there now, and they still do that. Let me ask you, you used to work in the anti-gang uh, violence unit, and yes. is it true that gangs are using the Carnival Parade as a, as a cover for their activities? I, I don't know if they're using it for a cover. I would say this is an opportunity when they're out amongst so many people and they see other rival people that they haven't seen in a while or in so close proximity, they will maybe take advantage of it as an opportunity to, mm -hmm. to do something or, or to settle a grudge. And it, and it wouldn't matter if it was the carnival, uh, the marathon, it wouldn't matter what large event it is, if these people come together and they have these beefs, these things happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't want to, you know, say that, that the carnival does it, because the people doing the carnival are, are really wonderful people, and it's a, a cultural cultural event that mm -hmm. the city's put on for a long period of time. And Shirley Schillingford does a great job with that. And she does an excellent yes. job mm -hmm. with that. The issue is, is that these other groups that feel comfortable hiding behind, similar to we talked about mass and cast, yeah. the cover in the tents, mm -hmm. well, they use the cover of large amounts of people to, 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 to merge in and out. That's correct. Okay. And, yeah. Now, according to the city's police data dashboard, there have been over 70 shootings, 70 mm -hmm. shootings so far this year, uh, and the overwhelming majority are in Dorchester. Uh, you know, an outside observer might conclude that the department's community policing initiative in those neighborhoods is not working. Mm -hmm. I, well, I would certainly wouldn't say that. We are down quite a few, probably over 20 shootings in, in comparison to what we were last year, mm -hmm. and in comparison to probably a five-year average, we're well below that. And so, you know, one shooting, certainly one homicide is way too many, and you never want to get into the statistics game of saying, well, our crime is statistics are better. They are better in some sense, particularly around the number of shootings. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, is that, you know, there's uh, too many guns in yeah. our society and particularly in, in our communities of color. And, you know, we're doing all we can to partner with federal agencies and everyone to not only get these guns off the street, but actually find out who's sending them here, who's selling yes. them here. Yes, how are they getting yes. into Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan? You know, your officers have recovered hundreds of guns over this past year, just literally yes. hundreds of guns, uh, including uh, some of these that we're looking at right Right now, what's the department's strategy to kind of capture these weapons? So it's it's usually, you know, we are, you know, data driven in a lot of ways. And so, you know, we, we don't put a big net out to catch people. We, we are trying to actually single in on the people who are driving the crime. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, Boston, for a long period of time, most of the crime is, is you know, perpetrated by a small number of people in the neighborhoods and in, in certain neighborhoods. And so that's who we focus on, the, the drivers of crime, the people who have repeatedly done this. And so we, we try to be where we think that they are and through intelligence and other forms of information, make sure that we're, you know, where, where they are and, and hopefully catch them before anything ever happens. The uh, Boston Police Patrolmen's Association president says crime is out of control uh, <laughs> and that a yeah. group of black clergy leaders uh, and community activists are now calling on Mayor Wu to declare a state of emergency due to violence in the black community. Is a state of emergency necessary? No, I, you know, and, I, and I'll say this, and <clears throat> we should never be complacent about our crime. Uh, as I say, as we travel on towards the march towards zero crime, mm -hmm. uh, you know, each year it seems like our crime statistics are getting better, but yet the tolerance for crime seems to be getting lower and lower as well, and that's a good thing. The reality is we are a very, very safe city. Uh, in comparison to the rest of the country, we're, we're, we are certainly one of the safest in this country. And even amongst our own statistics, we continue to outdo the year, the number of crimes and things of that nature the year as the year before. Uh, this year, our homicides are up a little bit, but our, number, our shootings in general are down mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. And, and so, you know, we understand that, you know, as our crime statistics is better, it's, each thing is heightened. Social media is, plays a big part of that. Yes. Everyone's a reporter now, not mm -hmm. just a normal report, mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. gets reported out uh, tremendously. And so, um, you know, we are going to work to try to get to zero at some point, and we're not going to keep working, but it's not a state of emergency. But we do need to, you know, pay attention and never become complacent. Never become complacent. <clears throat> now, last Sunday, two officers were attacked in downtown Crossing. And video from that incident shows one officer in a reflective vest being hit and taken to the ground by a group of teens. And on that same day, police responded to two fights involving large groups of teenagers near the Boston Common Movie Theater, also in the South Bay Plaza. 
how is the city dealing with youth violence? I mean, just I can't imagine a group of teens attacking a police officer. Yeah, that, you know, I couldn't imagine that certainly when I was a teenager as well. And it, it, it's sad uh, in, in many ways because it's, it's all kind of girls, boys, it's all kind of uh, young people involved in this stuff. Y you, know, <laughs> you know, the city spent quite a you know, bit of money this summer making sure people have jobs and giving them opportunities and, and uh, other activities to be involved in. But, you know, I think this is something, I think as the school year begins, I But think, you know, you said that the parents need to step up. Well, so, I, I, you know, I, I did say that, and, and I'm still going to say that because there's a, you know, I didn't get to it, but we've spent a lot of time and effort trying to find jobs, opportunities for the kids, uh, but the reality is if there's no accountability, uh, you know, particularly if I was a young person, if I had no accountability at home, I don't know what kind of trouble I could have gotten yeah. into. Um, I was more worried about you know, my parents finding out that's, about my activity than I was, there was about anything else. I wasn't yes. afraid of the police. I didn't know anything about the police. But I, I was, was afraid of my parents. Correct, and disappointing them. Yes. And, and, the, and you know, the standards that they set. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, these, a lot of the young folks were encountering that seemed that they, you know, they have no accountability. Yeah. They don't, they're not even thinking about it. As a matter of fact, that they seem to be very cognizant of the laws and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and, and that's sad. That, that's something, a trend I hope we, we're able to get in front of a little bit here. But mm -hmm. the good news is the school year is coming up. They'll hopefully be back in school soon. They'll have, some, They'll some have kids, something to do. Yeah, to occupy day. their time sure, sure. And, and help them focus. A now, little you're going to stay with us? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Our conversation with Boston Police Commissioner Michael Cox continues. When we come back, how the department is dealing with staffing shortages. That's next. <laughs> 